And what came out today is that on October 1st, which was today, is Ben today. Simmons, yeah, is today, I should say. Ben Simmons is to be paid 25% of his salary for the upcoming season. Well, he has not shown up to training camp, and the Philadelphia 76ers did not pay him. And so I see pundits saying, oh, this was cold red for the Sixers. This was the last straw for the Sixers. For them to do this means, you know, there's no return. There was no return yesterday and the day before and the week before. It's over for Ben Simmons in Philadelphia. Oh, it's going to make it so much tougher to trade him. It's been tough to trade him. People want him, but not at a high price. And if I'm the Philadelphia 76ers, I'm not giving him up unless I get what I want. Now, Daryl Morey may ask for crazy stuff. He's going to have to come off the foolishness. But he should still try to hold out for a good deal for Ben Simmons. And Rob G., and I like Ben Simmons. I like his game but other do you than the love fact him? that he doesn't shoot. But do you love him? Yeah, I ain't loving him no. <laughs> because he ain't shooting at Jay. All right. But I love his skills and, and all that. But if I maybe – I, maybe I couldn't run the team. I don't know. Because if I was running the team, I, I, I just believe we're going to be adults. We're going to be adults about certain things. And the adults say – if I have a contract to pay you to play basketball and you're not playing basketball just because you don't want to, not because you're injured, not because you're banged up, you just don't want to, then I'm not paying you. And as an adult, you should actually understand that. And if you don't understand it, you're a child. And I, I mean, I ain't got no time for that. So if I'm the Philadelphia 76ers, then I'm like, Ben, I'm not saying it publicly, but just, just, just stay, stay away. I, I might not even answer the phones no more if he calls or, you know, his representation. Just stay. We'll, we'll call you. Don't call us. We'll call you when we got a deal. You're not getting paid. You're not playing basketball. Go do whatever you want. And I'll take the hit because it's a hit. Not just because he's a good player, Rob G., but because that money does not come off the salary cap. Sure, it's not leaving my pockets as the owner, and I'm not paying him the money, but I, it still is eating up cap room. But you know what? Sometimes, man, you just got to stand on principle. I'll take it. I'll take the hit I'm until a- I get a good deal. So when, when we, we'll call you, don't, don't come around. You know, just stay. If you Do what you want, but... We'll call you when we got a trade for you. It might be a month from now. It might be a week from now. It might be a year from now. But the only way for them to get rid of the daily distraction that is Ben Simmons and try to win the most games they can on the basketball court is to just be like, look, he, he's out of sight, out of mind. No more questions about Ben. We'll let you know when we've traded him. That's it. Okay, now we had a report come out today, um, Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but what he is reporting is that Ben Simmons is considering, you know, reporting to the team, even though he said he wouldn't, just to ensure that they have to pay him. And then just saying, you know what, I'm here, I'm reporting, but, you know, my back kind of hurts, so I can't really practice. My back kind of hurts, I can't really, you know, do anything. So I'm just going to sit here and collect the check. If he tries to pull something like that, how would you respond? Well, first of all, there's conflicting reports. Yes, there are. Because Absolutely. yeah, there's yes. also reports out there saying he's going to sit. And out I've the whole been season. told, yeah. yeah, that he he's willing to sit however long it takes, and he's ready for this. He understood he was going to take a hit in the pocketbook, and you know he he's expected this. So right. I tend to believe that. Um, I think a lot of the the report that he's going to sign up uh, to Philadelphia. I, I think it's it's kind of what a lot of people around the league are thinking, maybe executives for other teams, saying that, hey, he could do this. You know, that's a way to avoid not I'm sure. Paid. I'm, yeah, I'm sure if you're like an agent, you're trying to find any loophole you can to make right. sure he still gets paid. 
Right. What I would do if I'm Philadelphia and that happens is I would have our doctors examine him. And if he doesn't let them examine him, then I'm going to the league saying he won't even let us give him a physical or examine him, which would be a problem. So I I think they make him be able to be examined. And if my doctors found nothing wrong with him, I, I would really have to litigate it and be like, look, we can't just take his word that he his back is hurting or whatever it might be, his hamstring. Our doctors find nothing wrong with him. The MRIs, the CAT scans, if they, if they went that far, they show nothing. He's just saying he's hurt. And we don't, because of all the, the context of this, where he said he doesn't not going to play another game for us, we have reason to believe that he's just faking it, right? And and see what the league, how the league would deal with that. But that and the players' association would probably get involved and try to fight it. But that's what I would do if I was running the Philadelphia 76ers. Okay, so um, to to go to go back to your original point where you kind of just said. We're going to treat him basically like he's not part of the team. You know, he's not here. We're not talking about him, blah, 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 blah. You know, he's still against our cap, but he's not a Philadelphia 76er. To me, that sounds eerily similar to what the Houston Texans are doing with Deshaun Watson. And I think that they are, you've said yourself that they're completely mishandling this situation. Now, what makes the Ben Simmons saga any different than what Deshaun Watson is doing? They're paying Deshaun Watson. They're paying him to literally sit there uninjured. Yes. Not injured. He's never come out and said he's injured. I I don't know that he's tried to fake an injury. He doesn't want to play, clearly. But they are letting him be there uninjured and not playing and paying him. I wouldn't do it. It's one thing if you got a one-year deal, and even then I'd be bothered by it. But when you've got a long-term deal, four years left on your contract in both of their cases, no, I am not paying you not to play. And so if in Houston, they are making a mistake because to be honest, Rob G, they actually look like they would have a pretty good team if they had a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there'd be a playoff team, but they'd be competitive on right. a week-to-week they'd basis. They'd look like they'd be That's... better than 4-12, and 12, which is what and, they and were last year. they've been mostly year. competitive this season, even in their losses so far. Yep. yep. Um, so I would be – I would. I've said it before, but I would go to Deshaun and be like, look, we, we want to play you. And if he refuses to play, now he's uh, – refusing to render his services so you can't get paid. See, I, I think with the Ben Simmons thing and similar to the Deshaun Watson thing, I disagree with you in that I think that the longer you string this out, the lower his value is going to be. Now his maybe value's low yes, I was saying, now maybe in the Ben Simmons case, his his value's probably already the lowest it's ever been coming off that horrible playoff that he had. But if your goal is to win a championship, which is what the Sixers' goal is, like they're one of the few teams that can legitimately say that we got a, a chance to win it all. Let's keep I, it real. Even if they had Ben Simmons, they weren't winning the championship. No, but they weren't winning the East. They, they think that they can. And do they? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know that they do. They, I don't know I, that they do. I think that they Doc think, Rivers actually said, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's because Doc Rivers is a terrible coach. But yeah. I think that they think that – Joel Embiid is the biggest mismatch in the Eastern Conference for anybody. Fine. For anybody. Fine. And the way that they defend. You beating Brooklyn like that? You might. You beating Milwaukee? No, you're not. You might. He didn't even beat Atlanta. Chris. Forget the big boys. When it comes to basketball, you know this because you played basketball. It, the most talented team doesn't nice always too. doesn't always win. Now, I heard, I heard Seth Wickersham give you buckets. <laughs> That's what I heard. Look, like. Obviously, on paper, Brooklyn's the favorite. But the one thing that they have a weakness in is inside. They're small. They're not physical. And I would expect, just like you would, that in a series, if they were to play each other, Joel Embiid would average like 40 points a game. I I don't expect that. You don't. Because Joel Embiid spends too much time on the perimeter. Without Ben Simmons, you don't think he'd just be in the paint? Nope. Really? Nope. I don't. Wow. I don't. I don't think it had very much. Now we know why Seth Wickersham would kill years ago. A few years ago, I used to think, well, he's got to go outside because Ben needs to be in there. 
It, it, it ain't that. He likes being outside. Now, he would still be – he's inside more than anybody else in the NBA today, but it's still not a lot. I would argue that he spends maybe it's 50-50, maybe it's slightly tilted toward more so in the paint, or maybe it's slightly tilted toward more so in the perimeter. But I don't think he would just beast somebody like Shaquille O'Neal well, down I mean, low. no, I don't think anybody beats anybody. Like but, you know, even just making your bread and butter down in the paint. Because right. he wants well, to get out there and be cute. I, I think that Philadelphia is on the short list of teams that can win it. Do I think they're the favorite? This no. year? Yes. Do I think oh, that stop. do I think that they're top three or four? No. But I think that in the Eastern Conference, it's though it's Philly, Milwaukee, Brooklyn. And in the West, it's Lakers and then like a big gap between every, the next closest team. It's Milwaukee and Brooklyn in whatever order you want to right. put them on a whole perch by themselves. And then I would even put Miami, arguably put okay. them ahead well, of Philadelphia. Here, here's my thing. And maybe is, even Boston. Is we agree that the Simmons and B, you know, even if they're together, they're probably not going to win because the pairing, the fit is awkward. But if you're Philadelphia, why wouldn't you try to – Get rid of this headache, even if you're taking, what, 60 cents on the dollar to get a C.J. McCollum or somebody of that level to pair with Embiid and the rest of that roster just to give them a whole season to work it out and see what happens. Well, here's what I do. Let's wait and see how some of these teams start. How does Washington start? What if it just goes downhill? What if they're bad? For the first month and a half, two months of the season. Which they should be. And all of a sudden, Bradley Beal is – well, you know, they made a lot of moves. They think they're going to be decent. But Bradley Beal becomes available. Or what if – I mean, you let's see how it goes in Portland. I know Dame is saying he's loyal to the soil and he's staying there and all that. And maybe – Dame is a pretty straight shooter. So, um, he, I, th- I believe him. But who knows? Maybe it's, they're not looking very good and he becomes available. You know, or or something else somewhere else around the league. Maybe Golden State's not playing as well. So, at this point, I would just wait it out. I think whatever deals you could get now, maybe Boston. Maybe it's not working between Jason Tatum and oh, Jalen Brown. And, no and I way think it you're will. Yeah. Jalen Brown. I, I think it will Simmons. work between those two. I mean, to a certain degree. But I'm just saying, like, just keep your options open and see what you've come this far. See how it goes you know, as the season starts in the first few months. And if I can get C.J. McCollum today, I could probably get C.J. McCollum in January. You know, so because I got to – if you're Philly, you have to think about this long term, not just this year. Yes, you, you want to get somebody that can help you win this year, but you also have to get somebody that's going to help you in the future. And, and the Pacers could be a factor. You know, it's been reported that they could be in the mix. The Malcolm, Malcolm Brogdon. Brogdon. Yeah, that they already turned that down reportedly. That was one of the yeah. first reported deals we heard about for Benson. But again, maybe things cha- will change. So I've come this far. Joel Embiid's laid down the gauntlet. He stood up for his teammates. I th- I'm sure that played well in the locker room. And he's not wrong, Rob G. You know that. And it's not just Ben Simmons. Any player that takes the stance of either – I don't want to play with these guys anymore. And even if you don't say these guys, oh, I love my teammates, I just want to get out of the organization, you're basically saying you don't want to play with these players. Or if you go James Harden on them just and nuclear. say we're not good yeah, enough. Yeah, this team sucks. I yeah. got to get out of here. Yeah. And we saw Boogie Cousins was like, yo, dude. And it's true. Yo, how how bad is it of a decision have to be if Boogie Cousins is the voice of reason for you? Yeah, there it is. 